Welcome to Your Health. Information about today's top health topics direct from Brigham and Women's Hospital experts. We want to remind you that this information should not replace the advice or recommendations from your health care provider. Hi, I'm Andreas Gumal. I'm an orthopedic surgeon specializing in cartilage repair at Brigham and Women's Hospital. Cartilage is a very complex tissue that covers the ends of all bones inside joints and it provides an almost frictionless surface and that's how it can withstand us taking between one and two million steps a year. It, it does not contain any blood supply and because of that once it's injured it cannot heal itself and that's where we come in as cartilage repair surgeons. There are two different ways to injure cartilage. One which usually occurs in younger patients in their teens and twenties is so-called acute cartilage damage. And that can happen when you tear your ACL, you dislocate your patella, you essentially chip the cartilage and create a defect. The uh, damage that we see in older patients, that's usually because of recurring micro damage. It is a, not an acute one-time injury, it is something that happens over time. When you talk about cartilage damage, um, by and large, we, uh, we mean a defect in the, uh, the cartilage. And you can think of a cartilage defect either like a cavity in a tooth or like a pothole in a street. You have a street that otherwise looks good but there's one area, one pothole. And just like potholes, cartilage defects tend to get bigger with time. So we really want to fill them before they get too large. When you, when you think about the field of cartilage repair, there are many different ways of treating cartilage defects. And you really need to look at the size and the location of the defect. So ACI, um, which stands for autologous chondrocyte implantation, is also known as Cardicel, was originally developed in Sweden by uh, a surgeon named Lars Peterson. And uh, at that time, there was really no technology like this available in the United States. So my partner, Tom Minus, uh, traveled to Sweden and learned the technique and brought it to the US and he started the first cartilage repair center in the US right here at Brigham and Women's Hospital and since that time more than 10,000 of these cases have been uh, performed in the US alone. It's within the field of cartilage repair the most advanced technique. It's an example of tissue engineering and um, different than other techniques it gives you a very high quality repair tissue that's very close to normal cartilage. ACI originally was designed for the knee and that's the most common application. Over 90% of these procedures are done in the knee. It does involve two procedures and the first procedure is just an arthroscopic procedure where you go into the knee through two very small, almost like poke holes, and you look inside with the fiber optic camera, you get a sense of the size and the location of the defect. And if you feel that it's amenable to ACI, then you take a small cartilage biopsy. It's just a piece of cartilage about the size of a Tic Tac. And we can use that piece of cartilage to grow more cartilage from it. You perform tissue culture and multiply the cells until you have tens of millions of these cells. This is a process that takes between four to six weeks. You come back to re-implant the cells and that's a more involved procedure. So here you need a true incision because you need to see the defects and actually clean out the defect to make sure that you have good surrounding healthy cartilage. And then you take a piece of tissue and it's a membrane and you suture that over the defect. So it's like a lid so that you have a small water tight chamber because the cells come back as a liquid and you inject the, uh, the cells with a small syringe into this watertight chamber. It, it produces good cartilage but it also takes a very long time. So usually when we do ACI our patients are on crutches for anywhere between six and ten weeks. Uh, they can do activities of daily living but we don't want them to run, we don't want them to do any pivoting sports that has to wait until 12 to 18 months once the cartilage is really healed and has become much stronger. So after everything is healed, after 12 to 18 months, I routinely let my patients go back to any activity they desire. They can ski, they can play tennis, they can play basketball and find their own limitations. And some patients are able to run marathons uh, with no pain, but that is a very lofty goal. 
Our goal from a physician side is I want to delay the need for joint replacement for you as long as possible. And we found that in more than 90% of patients, we could indeed delay the, the need for joint replacement surgery for at least five to 10 years. Thanks for watching Your Health from Brigham and Women's Hospital. A reminder, Your Health is intended for educational purposes only. It should not take the place of advice or recommendations from your health care provider. If you have questions about what you've heard, please consult with your doctor.